Hi, welcome to the Light of Deception. Today we're going to be talking about the face of darkness, that false light, the light of deception. What this whole ministry is about is revealing that something that looks good is not always good. There's a captivating light that draws people in that is not from God. It's a false enlightenment. So we're going to be talking about darkness, masquerading as light. So how do we know the difference between what is truly biblical, what is from God, and what is from the world, and what is from Satan, the prince of the power of the air? So what is the difference? How do we know when we're going to be led astray? How do we know that somebody, something that somebody is teaching is truly from the Word of God and is truly being conveyed in its entirety? People take things and twist them, take them out of context. They're teaching you a false gospel or they accidentally take th something out of context and they, they have to come up and, and say that, hey, I taught this one way and I, I was in error. So here is exactly what the Bible was teaching in this area. Now that's different. That's humility. You're humble enough to say that you're not perfect and you're not going to be teaching things perfect all the time, 100% of the time, especially if you're new at doing it, right? That means that you're going to still keep pushing forward. You're going to be learning and growing. But how do you know if somebody is a higher link? Somebody is in your church teaching a false gospel. How do you know the wolf in sheep's clothing? So I'm going to give you a rundown, some biblical scriptures that are going to help you. Also, I'm going to tell you about my own life experience where I got swept away for 12 years. And early deception, but 12 years in the Christian church where scriptures were being used, but the entirety of scripture was not being taught. There is a difference between using scripture to bring about a pastor's topic. If they're being relevant, if they're using a bunch of positive language, if they're staying out of eschatology and they're not teaching you one third of the Bible, if they're staying and they will not even visit the book of Revelation, why? Why won't they talk about Daniel? The and why are they not talking about prophecies that have been fulfilled and those to come that will be fulfilled? Why are they not preparing you for the end times? Why are they not talking about the seasons and the times we're living in? So why is the church all about looking, blurring the lines between the world and the church? There's Christianisms that people will be talking about. There's a form of self-love you know, and self-worth and self-arrival that should be put to rest because you're dying to self, right? So therefore, your pride and your arrogance is being put, your arrogance is being put to rest. Therefore, God can use you in your humility and he gets all the credit and not you because in your weakness, he is strong. If somebody looks prideful, if they look arrogant, if they have all the answers, if they want to lead you to an enlightenment, to an inner type of going within to find God, going within to find the inner child, visualizing being in the presence of God. They're doing all these different things to captivate you. And what you arrive out at is a false gospel. What you arrive at is what most of the world is under mysticism, some weird sense of mysticism where you're all that and a cup of tea. Right, so all the positive things in the Bible all become about you and you are arriving at self instead of diving, dying to self. So you are being, are you being transformed by the re renewing of your mind through scripture? Or are you feeling like you have the answers and everybody else needs to go through these steps or techniques to arrive at this enlightenment as well? Sounds to me more like Buddhism. Sounds to me a great deal like Hindu Hinduism. And you know, you become a guru. And a lot of people are going to these enlightenment centers. The sad thing is in, during these retreats is that some of them are under the guise of Christianity. And now, and some of them are just blatantly telling you what they are. It's that heightened level of self. You know, and that is the sad thing is when you rise above the Lord, where you take the throne instead of God. That is where the problem lies. So the enemy knows how to puff out egos. He knows how to tell you everything you want to hear about how wonderful and beautiful and awesome that you are, that you are internally, you just don't know that God yourself. 
So then why did Jesus come to die as your Savior, as his sacrifice, right? He sacrificed, he lived a perfect life, took on the hu human flesh, was perfect in everything, without blemish, without mar marks, and showed us how to live our own life and died it as a ransom for all, so he can wash over us with his righteous blood and break the, the chains of bondage and set us aside clothed in his righteous stand standard. How could he, why would he have done that if you could arrive at yourself and tap in to the inner being, the inner child? In visualization practices, your emotions will lead you astray your imagination will lead you astray so be very very careful boy is it alluring because everybody wants to feel all powerful and all knowing right we're all seeking for answers and once we think we have all the answers then other people need to be reach this heightened level right this elevation of self this evolution of self instead of getting to the point where you love the lord your god with all your heart mind soul and strength and love your neighbor as yourself so ultimately you're already loving yourself but you're learning to love others put god first others and then yourself so it's one of those things that you're um you're going to be humble right and you're going to know you don't have all the answers god has all, all the answers we only know in part and once we meet him face to face we will know you know the entire things of things right we'll know in its completion when we see and meet jesus face to face right so in this lifetime we have the bible we have the holy spirit to lead us in all truth that we receive at salvation we're not looking for an experience we're not welcoming and and having the holy spirit blow the atmosphere inside the inside the you know the churches inside the environment trying to create this you know pentecostal experience that um i'm thinking like if you're reading the bible and during pentecost they just were obedient and they showed up and they started speaking other people's languages not the language that they knew but the language that other people that were there could understand so it was um to really to think god is amazing he can do anything he chooses to do but for us to try to tap into experiences don't think the devil cannot masquerade as an angel of light. I always say this, and his ministers can't be masquerading as ministers of righteousness. So you're talking about familiar spirits, you're talking about devil, the devil, you know, and the demons. They are drawing you into this false, enlightened lights everywhere, you know, dreams and visions and prophecies and all those different things. And the Bible is already written from beginning to end, from Genesis to Revelation. So what do we need to know? We need to know the Word of God in its entirety so we know, you know, if something doesn't sound right, if something doesn't look like right, if people are being lured by the thousands this way, you're going the opposite way if you have to walk alone because you're not following people into delusions off a cliff you know you're standing sometimes that means standing apart because you don't want to follow the error you want to be the one that is following jesus so if everybody starts towing one way you start backing off the you know the other way and you're saying you we're going to follow because it's a narrow path right that leads to life and many people find the broad path instead of the narrow road that leads to life so be very careful, be very vigilant, be sober-minded in these days. Remember, you don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities. And the enemy's time is short. So remember, these days and this time, the pressure of so many things coming in so many different directions, all this confusion and chaos is not from the Lord, because the Lord is not the author of confusion. He knows the beginning, the middle, the end. Trust in him to lead you on the right path. And I pray that as you're diligent and you're sober-minded, right, that God will use you to lead people to Jesus. That's what really matters is their internal salvation. What is the Great Commission? Start remembering what that is and getting people to Jesus as quick as you can and helping them come off that road that many are following. That broad road, they, they, it's hard for them to hear because they bought into the delusion and the lie. 
So they really think that they, they've got it. So it's hard to let somebody know, but it doesn't line up with scripture. It's not biblical. It's worldly, right? It's about humans arriving at self. It's humanistic. It's not from the Lord because it's not, it doesn't have, it doesn't humble you. So think about all those different things. I hope I gave you some tips and clues on how to keep sober minded. I'm going to go over a few scriptures here. It says, the light and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not comprehend it. So remember that, that's John 1.5. Also, it says here, he reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness, and the light dwells with him. The true light. That's Daniel 2, 22. Okay, this says, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. 1 John 1 6 so everything has to be brought back to scripture to make sure that you're choosing the truth the true way the true truth the way the truth and the life the next one says this is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that god is light and in him is no darkness at all the true light Again, that's 1 John 1 through 5. So you're going to get it in John 1 5 and 1 John 1 5. Then it says, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life, the true light. It's very humble, it's very meek, it's very sober minded. Next, do not be unequally yoked together with an unbeliever, for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion has light with darkness? Be careful. 2 Corinthians 6.14 Do not follow the ways of the world. And have no, this is again, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them for it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. Be careful. Ephesians 5, 11, 12. There's evil people out there that have these secret plans and they are dark. Beyond anything that you can comprehend, it's so evil. Next, that's blatant darkness. And then there's much more subtle, deceptive darkness that can look alluring but is not. Have you ever seen somebody that's captivated by their computer and that's there's that light that's going around them or they're watching TV, you know, and you see that light and it seems like they're just in a trance, like bewitched somehow. So be very, very vigilant. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. This is a good one. And conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood, for forgiveness of sins. Let's never take that lightly. Colossians 1, 13 and 14. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 1 Peter 2, 9. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and the darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Genesis 1, 1 and 2. Remember how holy God is. He can do all things. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, but against principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. I say that a lot, Ephesians 6, 12. There is so many warnings in the Bible about all this deception that's out there, all this darkness that people get so easily lured into. 
And sin might be pleasurable for a season, or it might feel pleasurable for a season, but can you imagine meeting a holy God and you are in your sin, and you have not repented and turned from your wicked ways and followed after him, and given all the stuff in the past you have, you have pressed behind and you're pressing forward. Be very aware, aware that you face at the end of this life and face to face with a holy God and you give an account for your life. And I pray that account gets you, that you hear, well done, good and faithful, not perfect, good and faithful. Therefore, whatever you have spoken in the dark will be heard in the light. And what you have spoken in the ear in inner rooms will be proclaimed on the housetops. You cannot hide evil from the Lord. Luke 2, 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prisons to those who are bound. Isaiah 61, 1. Can you imagine that you, God might use you one day to really help somebody out that is fallen into ground. They're just so down in their sins and darkness, and God can use you to bring them into the true light and to repent from their sins and to acknowledge Him because He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through Him. And that he can have a renewed heart and mind and be completely changed by the renewing of his mind. I can't, I, that is so amazing to think about that. We got sanctification, glorification, justification, sanctification, and glorification. So thinking God has not finished his work in you and he will bring it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. So remember that you are a work in progress. None of us is without sin. Right, all of us are turning from our our fleshly, carnal ways because it's just like Paul said, "What a wretched man I am! What I will to do, what is right, but my flesh is weak." But God, in your weakness, is strong. So remember that. Turn to Him. Give your life completely over to Him, and see what He can do with a broken life, and He can bring you out of darkness into the true light. I hope this helps you. Thank you for listening. Bye bye.